So this landscape, as you can see, we are now looking at it in black and white to, to do our sketch. It is gridded for those who want to grid it. I'm going to be doing this on something roughly the same size uh, as uh, the source here. And for those of you who remember, this is a uh, this is a source that we used uh, a couple of years ago when we did our oil painting workshop. And we might try it again, depending on how many new people we have and depending on how our old people feel about it. Um, so once again, this starts, let's see the halfway point. This horizon line. So this line that I'm drawing here, which is basically here, this is what we would call the eye level horizon. Okay, and one there, you know, there are a lot of rules to painting and I'm kind of like most of them I think you can break once you understand them. But this is one that's really like you don't want to mess with, in my opinion. Um, and that is that when you're creating a landscape, you never want the eye level horizon line to like if this tr these trees weren't here, this would be where the sky meets the kind of where the vanishing point disappears to right like so you can see the stream kind of comes in here gets to a single point that's our eye level horizon and you never want that to be at the halfway point you either want it to be above or below kind of depending on what you're trying to emphasize obviously if it's above you're emphasizing what's happening down here land uh, based things and if it's above you're of course going to be focusing on the sky so, um, but never ever, I would say, landscapes look really, landscapes, cityscapes, anything for your sort of painting terrain looks really uh, amateur when you, when you stick it right in the middle. So you always want to avoid that. So here's the middle and this is this line. So this is this line back here. And then just very lightly with my pencil, I'm kind of drawing the outline of the trees. Remember, there's a chant, there's a there's a tendency to make boobs here, which is two trees absolutely parallel. Oopsie, I totally did it here, right here. You want you want to make sure your trees are generally not the same height. I'll bring that down a little bit. And I'll bring this down a little bit. And notice I'm, I'm drawing this as a connected line. And by the way, if this is the eye level horizon where the vanishing point disappears to, this is what we call the natural horizon. So it is where nature meets the sky. Um, and I am doing this fairly lightly, although I wanna make sure it's light it dark enough for you guys to see. And I'm not bringing any lines down here because I would like to do most of this with watercolor. Um, and then I probably will sketch in this tree that's in the front plane. So I'm bringing this down. He's kind of almost like a baseball catcher's mitt. <laughs> it's kind of the shape of that tree. So I'm bringing it down a little bit lower than eye level. And then giving myself this nice shadow here. I don't know how much detail, as I said, we get to choose, wait, I think that's too big. It totally is. So see, even I do that, especially I do that. There we go. That tree should only be about that big. I knew that because when I got here, I was like, oh, that's coming awfully co close to the center. And what I can see about this little creek here is that it comes right next to this front tree that's here, kind of comes in right here. And right, that's one side of the bank, the, the river, the creek bank. I think this is a creek. This is uh, one of the most uh, delicious, beautiful parts of Oregon. It's not far from where I live. It's called Savi Island. And uh, it's, um, it's just a lot of farmland. It's kind of on a little spit in the middle of the Willamette River, which kind of runs through the center of the city. It's really beautiful. Okay, and then this part of the bank is really dark. 
This part is less dark, it's kind of a medium dark. And then back here, thing be a, around the shadows and the trees, things are light. So as usual with watercolor, I'm trying to preserve. I really am not sure exactly how we're gonna do this, but we're gonna try <laughs> something. So we'll see how they work. And then you'll see there's a lot of dark here. So one of the things I noticed happened with our beginners yesterday is they, they drew these little shapes like this, right? Like this and like this. And then they didn't know what to do, right? What else? And I, th there's really a lot more dark here than there is light. In fact, virtually everything from here down is dark. And even though I know we wanna be careful to preserve in ink and watercolor our lights, it's still true that for the most part, things are dark. The other thing that was hard for people, so we're gonna talk about it a little bit, is how you kind of handle landscapes which mostly have uh, soft edges, right? How do you, and lots of things like grass. In truth, really, it's just kind of, that area. Honestly, it's kind of this area. This is really the light area, the light area in here. Everything else is pretty dark. Of course, this is dark. This is light, sorry. We might want to preserve out this, but we know that we can g gain, gain our darks if we need to. So the main thing we're concerned about is getting our our lights preserved and kind of protected. You guys can see that all right, I think. And then there's a couple of little dark hills. Does anybody remember this as you're doing it from last time? Is it coming back to you at all? It's been a, it's been a really long time. I would not be surprised if nobody could remember. There's a little sort of medium dark shadow here the water. So as usual, we're blocking out our areas. And you know, Jessica, I'm still thinking about what you said. I think we'll see how this one works <laughs> before I fully say, hey, it would have been great if we did not have pencil marks on this one. <laughs> In truth, we could probably add some ink on top of this, like colored inks if we wanted to. There's no reason not to, you can totally mix them. All right, hi lady, come on. And you guys tell me when you want to get stuck, when you want to go to the next stage. So I'm going to need to look at this. I can totally do that. So here's my question. If I can go to my desktop, can I do, I can add spotlight. So now you can see both me and the drawing equally, right? Can you guys see both me in the drawing? Yeah, ma'am. Yeah. So if I share, I think that changes things. But I would love to like get. So now is it you're just seeing the share screen and, and I look small? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, dang it. Dang it. That's just too bad. I love to be able to figure out how to do this, but I can't. That's not quite the answer. All right, so in the meantime, I'm gonna take a look at this. I have it up here so I can remember the colors. Um, so watch me for a few minutes and then I will put this up. Although you also have a picture of it on the thread. So if you want to, you can do it. And Lana and Eugene have had a lot of uh, experience with this subject. While you guys are working, I'm gonna take my blankie. Um, I like to look at what I did like 
this is kind of my palette, my mixing area. I sort of store all the colors and designated sides over here. And then sometimes I like to keep them. There are a lot of greens here, but I think I'll probably wipe this off with a little bit of water just so I could start my mixing over again. Sometimes though you can find something helpful from your last session, particularly if you're starting with kind of grays. What is that clicking noise? Oh, it's me, I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. I just didn't know what it was. <laughs> you're allowed, I like clicking noises. It wasn't bugging me. Just trying to figure out what it was. Okay. So I've got a fairly, oh, I need a new blankie. Broke my blankie. But I do have a fairly, I can need a second blankie to kind of really clean up the palette here. So I can do my mixing. Okay, so what's the first thing we're gonna start with, by the way, guys? Anybody have guesses? The darks. Yes, such good students. <laughs> so the danger here is that you're going to get too detailed too early. I want to really caution you against that. We're still going to block, even though it's watercolor and we want to be careful, right? We're still going to block in our first layers fairly uh, strongly. Hang on, is that blue? Yeah, that's green. Um, and so to mix, what, what do I do? I've got viridian green here, but that obviously is too green and not dark enough. So what am I, what do I do to darken that? Mix a red in with it, a yes. dark red. Yes, I'm gonna try chronocridone, see how that works. Red, because that's what I have here. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, it's very gray. It might not be bad for a first layer. I may want to go like add some burnt umber in or even blue to kind of blue that up a little bit and darken it a little bit. So that's green, uh, quinacridone red, a little burnt umber, and a little bit of ultramarine blue. Yeah, I like that. That's pretty dark. So before it dries, I'm going to come in here and lay down and I'm gonna have to keep mixing it because I run out. Uh -huh. And this is obviously not dark enough, but that is totally okay. And notice I'm still like kind of just loosely covering. I'm just thinking about how, what mistakes were made in last night's class that we can avoid tonight. Always nice. I'm kind of notice I'm kind of going through the bush because on this first layer, I know it's going to dry and get lighter, just like ink. By the way, Janet and Jean, you're like killing it on ink. Uh, yeah. I felt like my last few weren't so good, but what's that? I felt like oh my, my last God. few weren't so good, but. Jean, your, uh, I was just looking at yours because I'm getting ready to do a couple of posts. I'll probably do a post for every person who's done every one, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. um, and I have to tell you, like you have some exceptional work there. Absolutely mm -hmm. exceptional. Um, Jean, where's your inky stuff? I haven't seen it. I want to see it. She posted it on a, they've been posting on a WhatsApp thread for October, oh. uh, October. So, ah. so notice this is kind of gray and kind of flocky. Just to show you, I'm gonna pop up the screen for a second so you can see. It's even a slightly browner. So on my next layers, I may add more ultramarine brown and I'm glad I have this green as a base, but when I go in and darken on my next layer, I might add more, I might try more ultramarine blue and brown, so. Okay, 
Uh, in fact, I'm actually kind of running out of those things. So let me grab them. Ah, escaping me. Come back here. So this is an umber. that on hand. I think I've got enough yellows, but we will see. Um, and then let's look again at the source. Here, I'll share the screen for a second so we can see. Oh, did I lose the source? Really? Where'd you go? I had it up. My computer kind of loses its mind sometimes towards the end of the day. Does that happen? Are you guys finding that happens for you? Okay, I don't care. I'll just go away so I can get this. Sorry, I'm talking to my computer now, not to you guys. Um, have this laying here. This one is good here. Walking away. Let's look at it again as we go down the painting to look for more darks. And definitely there is sort of browns in this green, in these darks, right? These are fairly browny, greeny darks. So I'm definitely gonna bring ultramarine, um, uh, sorry, uh, burnt umber into the next layers. Birch Umber can be kind of an orange and also kind of a um, red. So it can work for mixing either orange or red. Kind of like goes across both. So once again, I want some green, but I want Burnt Umber and I want blue, ultramarine blue. So I've got this very mossy CE. Yeah, that's nice. Maybe even a little bit more blue. So once I get that, I'm gonna lay that in. Oh yeah, I'm gonna need way more burnt umber and way more blue. I want green in there, but I want, it, there's a kind of a loamy richness that goes beyond the green. I really need to capture, there we go. Right now, I'm not worrying so much about edges, but I will be later. I'm probably going a little bit darker than I should, but I feel pretty confident because these are the darkest areas. And they will dry. I'm finding myself adding a lot of blue as I'm remixing, right? As I'm going up and needing to remix my, my blend here. I'm having to add, sort of really grab a lot of ultramarine blue and burnt umber and more blue. So that it doesn't look too much on the brown. It still has got kind of a greeny edge. Let's do that here too. And then definitely over on this side. In fact, I might just go straight burnt umber and blue on this side and I've run out of burnt blue. 
So there's a lot of continuity between watercolor and ink, as those of you who are working with it are finding. Would you agree with me on that? Yes. Talk to me about that. What are you seeing as similar? Um, well, it's, I mean, I've only worked with the colored inks once, and I felt like that was a disaster. But um, they're so transparent, and this can be okay. Yeah. But other than that, it's the same. They feel the same. Yeah, the way you apply them is the same. Yeah. All right, that's really nice. So this is just burnt umber and black, and I think that is really more what I'm looking for. I can water it down a little bit so it's not so intense. Oh, it's so pretty though. And notice how already my back line has, um, has lightened, so I can go back in if I want to. Just darken things up, one, two dark areas. And then here is a greener and a lighter, a sort of a medium area. So I'm using more water and I added a touch more green into the mix. So it's dark, but it's not as dark as what's happening down here. Ugh, it's already pretty funny, isn't it? It's already, even though it looks kind of weird, it's already kind of pretty. It's a beautiful, and then there's kind of a medium dark area here in the top of the lake. So you can add that, the top of that little creek, so you can add that in. Look at what's happening. What's so interesting to me is what happens as we add in the darks, right? As we add in these darks, already the whites are interacting as shapes as well. So even though we may or we may not be laying color down. So are you guys going along with me? Do you want a minute is my question or do you want me to keep going? I think maybe I, it would be helpful for me now to see the color again. To see the color? Okay. Yeah. You have it on your WhatsApp thread. I took a picture. Oh, okay. Yeah, so pull it up for there. Um, this is still pretty neutral and dark. It's not so bright and yellowy and greeny. It's more muddy. So take a look at it, but I mean, I can also share it quickly. Oh, wow. really, every time it goes away, every time I Put my screen down. Okay, so landscape. Here again. Share it for a minute so you can see it. So you can see mine kind of small and yours big. I like it. I love seeing the little testing marks under here. I think that's one of the, I think that's really fun. Uh, when we get to pastels next month and I will review pastel materials and we're getting to pastels very, oh, do you guys want to keep going with watercolor? That is actually an option for you. We could go with watercolor for two months if you wanted to. Or do you want it, or do you want to jump into pastels with the other, like the other groups? I'm enjoying the watercolor, but I like the pastels too. Um, I would be happy to keep, well, you can always watch the, you can always either jump into one of the other classes or watch the video too, to get the watercolor, to get the pastel experience. I kind of think we should stick with watercolor, but I, you guys tell me as we get along, if you're getting tired of it, I think we could get some really good, you guys are kind of in the mode, mode of watercolor and it would be wonderful to do it. I'd like to wait before buying more. What's art that? Supplies. I'd like to use the watercolors more before I start buying more. You got it. All right. So we're going to continue <laughs> on. Unless I hear otherwise, we're going to continue on through uh, November with watercolors. So you'll just, we'll just keep doing sources, different stuff. 
Um, so now I want to get go back over and sort of darken my darks in areas. Um, you know, one of the things you guys can do is if you see me as like, um, if you can see Leah demo uh, 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 on the side, you can mm -hmm. actually click, you know, there's like these little bars on the top. There's like a, a grid oh, with yeah. nine squares, two, two lines, a thick line and a thin line. If you click the one thick line, it'll move to just Leah demo. And then That's you can- great actually take your computer and stretch it. You can go to the side of your video and stretch it. So you could actually, we could put both of these on here, but y'all have to figure that here. Hold on, figure that out. Come here, you. I'm trying to get it to come. It wants to go behind the shared screen. Yeah, it's the sharing thing that doesn't, anyway, Never mind. I'm gonna pull the share screen down so that I show back up as a uh, big, all right. And you guys have uh, the WhatsApp thread so you can watch. So, oops. Yeah, so now I wanna go back in with my darks and I wanna make sure my darks are kind of brown enough or warm enough. So I'm definitely pulling in, I'm gonna move away from red and mix um, Viridian green and burnt umber for my second layer. Uh -huh. Nope, even then too dark, still too green. So I'm gonna pull in more burnt umber, blue, uh, sorry, ultramarine blue. Yes, so ultramarine blue, viridian green, burnt umber. You don't want it to look too brown. You want it to look bluer and darker. So drift in more blue. And then it's quite dark here. So I'm gonna have you layer in dark and I might have you notice how I'm using, I don't know if you guys can see this here. Are you seeing how I'm using like the side of my brush as well as the uh, fat end? So I'm kind of creating a little bit of texture, not too much cause you could get really anal here and I want you to, to stay sort of with the basic shapes. But where the sort of the, the tree line meets the sky, I'm doing a little tapping. Uh, just to create a little bit of leap. And I'm looking at what's happening here to try and get a sense of how to play that. But I'm really only working the um, the area where the uh, where the where the leaves the leaves meet the sky the tops of the trees and then here because this part in the front is a little bit lighter I'm actually going to go around it so there there is this baseball mitt shape here so I'm just going to go around with more dark hello lady. kind of darker here, going back in. I'm not doing much. I'm not doing as much as it looks like I'm doing. I'm really just doing very little bits. And I'm not doing it all the way down. I'm just, it's getting dark. It's getting dark and, and solid here towards the base, but I am working a little bit. I'm adding a little bit of detail using my fat brush. Just to get a little bit of those different shapes happening back there. We're going to do more later with a smaller brush, perhaps, but right now. And then there's and then here there's kind of a trunk, which I'm gonna pull down, but then mostly obliterate. Don't do too much. You really can do too much detail and lose it all. And then you'll be like, why does my painting look bad? Because there's too much detail. So it's really not that much. It's just like a little bit.
Yeah, already this is looking. This is a really great uh, image for painting, I believe. Nice. Not too much. It can go crazy. It can go crazy if it gets too much in. And then of course now these areas have started to dry a little bit and lighten. So I may wanna go back in and darken using that kind of same mix. And then here as well, I might wear like an edge. Meets another edge. So there's a lighter edge meeting a darker edge. I might do a little bit of texture detail. So that's the thing about landscapes, right? Almost everything is soft edges. Virtually nothing is hard edges. They're all kind of ragged edges. Um, we think that we have to draw every blade of grass, but we do not. We just need to go Please to the do area. not. Yes, where light, uh, well, the Croatian naive artists, when I lived in Zagreb, they totally fucking did. They drew every leaf on the tree and every, and it was beautiful. And actually my, my landlord was a Croatian naive painter. Oh, amazing work, but Jesus, <laughs> not like what you wanna do. So what you're doing is you're focusing on using your brush to create this kind of ragged thing. And then the other thing you really have to be careful about, I want you to watch this on the side here. This is what a couple people did last night. They just did this, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like little grass threads all in a row. And that's not what's happening with grass. It's going that way, it's going this way, it's going, it's bigger, it's smaller, right? There's like, it's got a kind of randomness and wildness. However, your mind is gonna wanna do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's our obsessive need for order that does not really exist. <laughs> so, so just be aware of that. As you're going through. Be aware of that tendency that that's something that are, we all want to do and try to avoid that. Try to make some going in this direction, right? Some going that way. Yeah, I'm still just using one brush. You can see here, I'm using this big brush. I'm gonna go in later with a smaller brush. That's where I'm kind of wanting to add my detail and I'm not even doing, and really most of the detail is really kind of where this dark edge meets this light edge. I definitely have to get darker here. I'm gonna have to mix again. There we go. Notice I'm still testing. I'm still testing to see, is that the color I want? Nope, it needs to be darker. So more blue, more brown, more green. This is just a deep, dark, beautiful, rich. Stuff going on here. And you don't draw grass like shapes in the middle of sort of big brown chunks or light chunks. You really wanna keep those more consistently. You're really focusing on creating that texture difference Um, where the edges are. So working the edges is so hugely important in painting. That is where our eye goes. The edge is like anything. It can be where a subject meets the background. It can be where um, a light area of the grass meets a dark area of the grass. It can be where the grass meets the water, right? Or a reflection meets the water. So you can see I've added a little bit of detail here. Not so much here, maybe a little bit but not so much here because it's farther back. I don't need that detail, that level of detail. As I go further back, I need more kind of plain fields of color. And then I think we're getting ready to kind of layer our lighter colors in. Do you guys want a minute? 
I could come back in here. Yeah, I'll do that later. Oh, I'm so glad. This is so beautiful. I can't wait to see yours. What I love about this particular subject is how quickly it reads. Wouldn't you say, Jessica? Yeah, for it's sure. A, it's it a good reads, composition. It's a good it's coming in right to your focal point. Right. Oh, it's coming into your focal point. There's stuff going on there. There's wonderful contrast. So even as you're starting to lay it down, we haven't even laid our light colors down yet. We've already got some pretty things happening. Oh, yeah. So now we've got all these vibrant greens and these uh, kind of golden yellows. Interesting. All right. So let me share this for a minute so you guys can look at it while you're working. So this is all greens that we have, but all of these greens have been muted. They've been pushed back. Um, they've been grayed a little bit. All landscape greens, even these bright green ones, we're gonna add touches of red to, tiny touches of red to. Even the bright, vibrant ones, they need to look like proper greens. They need a little bit of red. It is rare that you see a landscape green that needs no, no mixing. And you'll never find landscape, uh, you'll never find colors out of the tube that will work for landscapes. Um, that greens. is true. That they is just, very, they, very true. And people think sap green will do it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that's the worst fucking color ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> it's ugly. Ugly. Horrible. I don't even have a green on my I don't, I don't. I don't. I don't yeah. use tube green at all. Yeah, right? Not for, not for landscape. Mm -mm, not for landscapes. Never. You probably mix them all from your yellows and your blues, all. just depending on mm -hmm. what, and then touches of red, depending on where you, what where, what yeah. you're drawing, what you're painting. Exactly. I like viridian. I found, I've had some luck with viridian green. I like it. It's kind of a neutral. It's neither warm. It can be either warm or cool, depending on how you mix it. So it's kind of Ricky fun. Ricky uses that on his palette as a blue. It's his, it's his, uh, one of the, he uses ultramarine and viridian blue and viridian green as his two blues. Nice. Yeah, I and that's see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see that. It's almost blue. It's almost blue. And it's got some nice um tones. I found it, I've had some success with mixing, but I almost always find that with even if I have a green, I'm gonna mix yellow or blue with it. So I'm gonna put a little fallow down. I don't know if I'm gonna need it, but I'm gonna put it in. And I'm refreshing my yellows. So I have, I have a lemon yellow or a, oops, nope, those are both cad yellows. So those cad yellows, here's my lemon yellow. I'm in a yellow pail. Um, it's good to have a cool and a warm yellow. I don't know how well you guys can see this, but can you see the difference between this yellow which is almost an orange. That's a cab yellow. And then this yellow. This is a cab yellow pale, but it's you know designed to be cooler and lighter. I like to have both of them on my palette. And you guys tell me when you want to start mixing the want me to start mixing the lighter, the brighter greens. Go for it. Mm -hmm. All right. And notice I have not strayed from using this. Um, I haven't strayed from this brush. Okay, so I'm gonna have that picture up. And one day I'm gonna figure out how to put a picture up here. All right, so I'm gonna start with Viridian Green. Well, actually, let me clean this up. I want a clean palette for the, the brights. Even though I'm gonna use a little bit of grayed version, I still want kind of a clean workspace. Um, so I'm going to try a little bit of green and then I'm going to try some cadmium red, just a touch of cadmium red in there. And then I'm going to pull in, I'll start with, um, cadmium yellow and see what I get. Cadmium yellow hue. Okay. Want a lot more cadmium yellow. Oh, there we go. That's kind of pretty, huh? 
I like that. That's a little bit like what's going on. It's a little too yellow though, so I might add a touch more green. But I also might try another mix. I might try, hello lady. Oh, the same one is here. Um, I might try Viridian Green down here with a little bit of the pale yellow and a touch of cadmium red. Everything, I always put cadmium red in. Don't avoid that step. If you do, I will totally be able to tell and so will everybody else. Um, oh, that's nice. That's a little bit closer actually to what's happening. So I'd say Viridian Green, a little cad red. See how that kind of loosens. And then this um, lemon yellow or pale yellow. Oh yeah, that's it. So I tested that first, right? Before I went in. And then back here, I'm gonna just lay that in. There's a couple places where that is. There's some golden areas, which I want you to try and avoid. Let's um, just lay in this green. Oh, look how beautiful that is. It just completely, immediately, I love this about color, completely interacts immediately with all these. Okay, so I'm gonna go on either side of the shadow, but there is, down here, there is this kind of golden color. So I'm gonna avoid putting green there. So I might brush in the green over this medium dark section I think that'll work. And then I'm gonna brush it in. Yep, over here. In these, this light area here. Yeah. Whoa. We're gonna use more of that. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, it's so pretty. And I could go over with a kind of brighter version if I want to later, right? To really brighten that up. Because you can see it kind of pales a little bit as it dries. I can go over with more yellow. If I want to make it a little bit brighter. Um, I'm going to be doing something here. And I'm winging it, you guys, because I'm not exactly sure how to deal with these areas, which have all this white. So we're just going to try. I'm just going by instinct here. So um let's try mixing after that so once you get this which is viridian again viridian green sort of pale yellow or lemon yellow that's a cool yellow and a touch of cadmium red to get these green areas we want this kind of uh really i think i need ochre yellow ochre and i don't have any so here hold on let me put some on my palette yellow ochre, and I might mix it. Oh, let me see, if I put ochre just right on like that, I think it's too, too bright. I might even, so normally, you know, white is a funny watercolor uh, thing to use, but I'm mixing a touch of white with my ochre. And I don't mind it. I'm testing it down here to see, is that the color that I want? It is kind of the color that I want. Another option might be burnt sienna and ochre, and then water it down. Oh, that's nice and bright, maybe too bright. Burnt sienna and uh, ochre is too bright, I think. So actually, so here's the thing, white kind of dulls, right? So actually that's helpful here. So even though I rarely use white, um, we're gonna use it here to mix uh, ochre and white to create this kind of bushy area here. Hopefully I'm going light enough. Um, don't hesitate to water, to make it really watery and even more white, more white than kind of golden yellow. 
because this is not, eh, it's, it's similar in value to that light color, so it's not too bad. And there's a little bit here. I think that's about it. And notice as I come up to the edge of another area, a darker area, I kind of, or even a greeny area that's kind of the same value, I kind of push it up and blend it in. I let it kind of bleed in a little bit. Because I want a soft edge. I don't want that feeling of like these very hard edges. Like here, I've still got pretty hard edges. And then did I, yeah. And then I want to take some of my green, my lighter green, which is cadmium red, viridian green. Um, and a touch of yellow, a touch of light yellow. I may be even a little bit darker version. I kind of want to go in where the edges are, where the edge meets the light edge meets the dark edge and create more grass marks and kind of a medium that blends into the light. So see how I'm, it's really dark. There's not so much light there. So I've created this kind of middle tone. So once again, I'm sorry, I wasn't really thinking this through. I was just doing it instinctively. I could see that my light area here was too light. So I'm bringing in a slightly darker green, which is viridian green, cadmium red, touch of yellow, but it's a little bit darker. And I'm kind of using my brush on the side and I'm kind of bringing some of the uh, that medium color down and up. So see, I'm letting some of the light come through, but I'm also everywhere there's an edge between light and dark, I'm sort of trying to get rid of the edge, the strong edge by creating ragged amounts. Yeah. And I could always darken my dark area. So I could go back in with um, burnt umber and ultramarine blue and a touch of green in here to get darker and bring some dark grass stains up and down. Yeah, so what we're trying to do is kind of get rid of, wow, that's looking really fucking cool actually, <laughs> wow. I notice it's kind of darker around this edge, um, around this edge here, so which is here. So I'm going to go in and add. Would you guys like to see the? Do you do, uh, you can still watch me small? Do you want to watch me big, or do you want to like actually see this the colors of the source? I want to see the colors. Yep. So I'm going to share this. I'll still be there. You're going to need to just watch Leah demo. I'll be smaller. See if you can figure out how to stretch me out a little bit. That might work. But here are the colors. So I'm actually bringing, you can still see there's a transition from light to dark, but there's much less, there's much less light showing. Down here, it's a little bit dark. So I still have these, I'm kind of letting my darks and my mediums bleed into my, um, uh, my, my light areas. And I'm trying to, I've got a darken in here. And I'm trying to get rid of those solid lines that were there A 
And once again, everywhere there's an edge, I'm trying to get a little bit of grassiness, kind of going this way, that way. I think that's kind of successful. <laughs> Um, if you're tired of working on this, you could drift in a little blue. I'm going to try shallow blue. Let's see if I can make it kind of light and pretty. Um, just plain old shallow blue for the sky, a little bit of that little bit of blue in the sky. Yeah, so very watery version of shallow blue can kind of uh, come in over here. A little bit even darker. Shadow blue is a little bit cooler, but it'll be really vibrant. It doesn't come everywhere. There's a lot of white actually in this particular sky. So there's only like kind of a little splash of blue. If you wanted to, you could just lighten it, your super brush, and then just do kind of a mostly water wash over with just a teeny as touch of blue to maintain some color. And then we're playing, you know, we're continuing to work edges. So I'm coming back in and trying to get it a little bit lighter. I'm going in with like yellow and white and ochre to but mostly yellow and white. And um, to kind of push the brightness of this ochre area against the green, right? So once again, I'm coming into the green area around it. Yeah, nice. Oh, it's starting to look pretty. Um, it's a little bit, it's interesting, the um, water doesn't have much color, but it's got a little bit happening down here. Uh, I'm gonna skip the tree, so I'm leaving that blank. <laughs> you guys can do it if you want to. So I was actually thinking a little bit of ultramarine, uh, sorry, uh, fallow blue from like what's in the sky. And then that mix that we use, the dark mix that we use in the ground. So I'm picking a little bit of uh, burnt umber, a little bit of ultramarine blue, and then a little bit of fallow blue. Let's see, do I get that kind of metallic y color? Yeah, yeah, I like that. And then very, very lightly, I can brush that in here. Whoop, too. Gotta be careful not to get too dark. Easy to get too dark with this. This is such a light color. It's got to look super light next to these darks. Uh, and look at what's happening. I'm like brushing into the dark reflection and getting some really cool uh, what, textures. What did you mix with the blue? Uh, I took a little bit of shallow blue and then a little bit of burnt umber and ultramarine blue to make that kind of color. And then I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna really lighten my, I have a tiny bit of color left on the brush, but just like the sky, I'm gonna, it's gonna be mostly water. I'm gonna kind of brush in around the water. So the water is not completely, I'm gonna leave this area white, but I wanted to bring in a little bit of color up here. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. So you, I don't know if you guys see what I did here, but I did absolutely leave this area completely white. However, this is darker. Um, and then I can go back in and start adding in sort of brighter greens in the background here. Um, I can sort of take some of that mix, cadmium red, viridian green and yellow. I can put it in like here a little bit. Eh, maybe too dark. Maybe yellow. Right, there's a little bit of kind of yellow. Maybe it just needs straight yellow. Huh. Um, 
because it's kind of a little bit yellower here. Um, I can go, I can try and warm this up with more ultramarine, with more burnt umber. See what actually happens. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, I could get away with like uh, just a tiny touch of ultramarine blue, mostly burnt umber here in my base if I want to warm up this back area. Not too much though. I still want to kind of maintain a coolness but I want it to be, be a little bit more brown so this warms up a little bit more. And then there's a couple of, so I might take my smaller brush at this point, um, go back to ultramarine blue uh, and burnt umber. Oh, that was shallow blue, let's see, Come back here. To have a dark and I might in a couple of places put up like kind of tree trunks back here, the dark ones. And maybe one or two, streak one or two of those up into the sky. Not too many, but one or two. Um, just to create a little textured feeling, a little bit more solidity for the tree trunks in the background, but be careful, a little bit goes a long way. It's really tempting to want to overdo that. And you don't want to do that. So just in a few, with a different brush that makes different marks, maybe a cup, whoopsie, yeah, that was too, I shouldn't have done that. Pull it back. Yeah. It's kind of nice. And then I can add more, I can make things more yellowy. My green can become more yellowy on the top layer. So I can add cadmium red, more green, and that cadmium yellow to get that sort of really bright, right thing happening. I want to go back to my big brush for that. Most of this, once again, and I'm a big fan of this, is big, you know, one brush work. Although I did switch to a different brush. And then what you might want to try at the end is a little bit of super light, bright, the light bright green. So that would be Viridian green, cadmium red, and a lot of yellow come in and sort of add some lighter streaks here or even a little bit of white in those streaks right so there's a little bit of those white and you can lay that in once again just be careful work really work edges yeah i like it so pretty Not sure I'm super happy with this. Might want a little bit more. Maybe I can go in with some dark around the edge. Some kind of highlight go over. So I probably left this area too light. So I'm kind of trying to push some contrast in. Maybe that will work. You can also try laying, if you're wanting kind of bright color on your top layers, you can try just laying the tubed paint with no water so that it kind of lays out. It'll still dry and dull, but it might like kind of push in the direction that you want it to go a little bit more. I like it. Very pretty. Maybe brought in a little there. Yeah, that actually kind of works. So, well, well, well. I think that's pretty nice. All right, so let me, does anybody have questions before I kind of pull down the demo?
Oh yeah, that does read pretty well. Um, I'm gonna take a picture of this close so you guys can see it and send it across the thread. Um, let's see, I wanna leave the meeting here. It's confusing. All right. Is anybody enjoying this? <laughs> no. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't watercolor just great? Isn't it wonderful? Mine's or turning not. out terrible. Well, then you might want to start over again. So, or send it over so I can help you. No. With the. I've I've run out of yellow and my greens are all muddy and. Okay, so you know what your job is to get more greens, no more yellows. My yellow is gone. Yeah, so you need to get more yellow. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, but I don't have any, so okay. I can't fix it now. This is a, a deceptively tough subject. Um, Jean, you might try just watering down your green a little bit more. Jessica is here making the case for the light box. I am not against the light box. I think the light box is pretty good. Oh, nice, Diana, that uh, those, yeah, those uh, brights are sitting very nicely on top of that, on top of that. Diana's painting grease in acrylic, for those of you who are interested. Um, maybe we'll do grease next week and <laughs> find some pretty light, like uh, grease in, I don't know. Something, something not so heavy and dark. Um, Jean, if you want to send it over to me, if you don't want to send it through the thread, you can just text it to me. <laughs> I'll put it in the thread. Make everybody else feel good about theirs. Oh, stop, stop. All right. Let me take a couple of close-ups as well. If you guys have some idea of the brushwork. Here, I'm gonna go real close so you can see what this looks like. Part of the problem is I don't have good colors to start with. I just need to get a better set. Yes. Yeah, so you're right. We're not going to start you with pastel until you you get your and uh, what I'm seeing here, Jean, is a lot of um, your darks edges are too strong. So you want to blend in some middle tones. Can you see where I'm pointing here? Yeah, so this is too light. So what you want to do is mix in a little bit. So what I would say is just don't do greens, do oranges or red, you know what I mean? Like create like a different, what I would say is don't worry about recreating the colors. Um, mix, uh, try say like an orange, uh, a set of oranges. So maybe bluey or, you know, maybe find some rust colors that you like, something like that. And okay. um, blend them in to here, right? Because you, as you can see, you've got this big piece like this right now, that's all light. And really what's mostly happening here, it's a tiny little bit of area that's light and it's got some dark bleeding in. So what you want is kind of a medium tone something. Yeah, in fact, why don't you just sort of mix orangey grasses like what, you, what, like what you've got going here. Okay. Okay, and really try to get rid of that strong black line. Because right now you've got a strong black line and you did the thing I told you not to do, honey. So I am gonna get on you here. You, you did one, like little soldiers. One, two, I three, know, four, know. five, I six, I so. I so, that before you said not to. Okay, so work, uh, so work on getting rid of those lines and, and warming up and, and mix various sort of orangey rust colors to be your, your, your grasses, since that's what you got. And you can see here, look at, I just gave you a, a close-up version of my uh, textures. So you can see how you can't really see the edges here. You can't really see the, the strong edges. We want to get rid of every single strong dark edge. 
Um, also, Jean, you, um, the only other thing I would say here is in the back here, you've actually put spaces between the trees and there are no spaces between the trees. From here down, it's just solid. Ah. So that whole area has, you cannot, the, it doesn't look right to have those trees all spelled out the, that way because they're too far away from us. So anyway, but good. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You have to, this is what happens when you kind of uh, splash ahead, right? With with watercolor, it can kind of backfire on you. That's okay. It's not super easy. We're doing a lot of things. We're mixing, you're working with mark making. We're trying to create soft edges everywhere and that's tricky. So if it doesn't happen right the first time. One second, you guys. Has anybody texted me?
is in here. Has everybody voted? Yep. Good. I got mine. I've been tracking it and today it finally said received and good. Excellent. I need to um, <clears throat> dig it out of my daughter's room. Because <laughs> I told her she could fill it out. Right. Oh, is she 18? No. Oh. Oh, she can fill it out. Your ballot. Yeah. And it's as long as, room. She, as long as she voted for the person you wanted her to vote for. <laughs> as long as she I would not, not vote for the person I don't want to vote for. <laughs> <laughs> and you wouldn't allow her to fill that out. No, I, I have um, always taken her to the polls with me to vote. And give her the sticker and let her pull the levers when it's the uh, in-person stuff or fill in the little. I've always involved her with it. Um, yeah, why not? Here, wait, I'll show you what Luca's doing right now. She's like playing underneath you guys. How's the... she doing with the kitten? Oh, the kitten is being a shit. So the truth <laughs> is, particularly today, he just seems to have lost his mind. He also ate some, like he also ate like one of my hair ties. <laughs> I, guess oh, no. like, I know, like I'm like just thinking, oh fuck, is this gonna be a like expensive like <laughs> vet visit? I'm waiting. He doesn't seem to be distressed right now, but um, but he has been running around like crazy. He'll probably be okay. I think so. He's got a constitution. So anyway, he's just losing his mind right now. Like, I don't know. He just is going through a jag or wants to go out and I'm not letting him out because no, because he'll run right into the street or he'll run away. He's kind of an idiot. So, <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you can't really be trusted to go outside. So he's all right. But we had a tough day today, I would say. Aww. And he, every time he sees her, he just lunges. Like with all four claws, you know, sets of claws out, and Aww. he's just an asshole wow. sometimes. <laughs> like, he's oh, like, boys can't be trusted. What's that? You know, boys can't be trusted. That's right. Everybody told me not to get a girl, that the girls would be more territorial. Um, what? Yes, I've heard that girls are more territorial with another girl. Oh. So we got a boy and he seemed very cautious, but yeah, anyway, he's just losing his mind. But he's cute. He's he adorable. He's cute. He's lovely. He's lovely. That's why you can't yeah. kill him. He's a sweet cat, but he is a total asshole too right now. <laughs> he's just totally a jerk right now. <laughs> the same Poor way, kitty. like, you know, big, and he wants to be out and doing more and that is just not going to happen. And he's got all kinds of oats to sow and he's just crazy. And he's going into the vet on Monday. <laughs> so when hopefully. are you getting him fixed? Hopefully, not Monday, but hopefully soon after. <laughs> like as soon yeah. as possible. Yeah, uh, just don't do it too early when it's a boy because they can get incontinent yes. when they get so older. I will, I'll ask my vet about when to do it, but as soon as we possibly, he's about four and a half months old now, as soon as we possibly can. Yeah, that'll help. Yeah, sure. but it is funny. It's an old and, you know, and, uh, and so because he can't sleep with us, like he can't sleep because he'll attack Muka all night long. Um, I sleep with him in the studio. <laughs> so it's like, oh my God, it's like, it's absurd. It's like having a, it's a baby. You know, it's having a baby in the house. But 
in general, he's pretty um, fancy. Yeah. My kitty is a year now and she still does the odd things. Today she ripped apart my curtains. Yeah. Climbing oh. on them. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. They're kittens for three years, really. They really are. They really are. Mook well, it looks better, but it still looks like crap. <laughs> Anybody else want to send me what they're working on? Is it yeah, time just to send yet? You again. What's that? What time is it? Is it time to send stuff yet? Or That's we have time still? Uh, sorry, it is six uh, seven thirty for you guys. Oh, okay. okay. I, can, I might be able to help. I said I sent it to you again, but it still looks like crap. It looks better, but it still looks like crap. Yeah, yeah. You may want to start this over. And you may want to actually watch, like go through the video and watch again before you try. I know it's like really wanting to launch in while I'm working. It's, it is better though. It is much better. Well, the it, thing is, it's really hard for me to see like, like where you, the, the largest part of shadow in the front, it was really hard for me to see what you were doing. So that's why I just kind of go. Why was it hard to see what I was doing? I just don't think I see well when you're what you're doing up on the screen i just don't see it very well um is it uh does it does the does the camera need to be closer i'm i'm here's my screen i'm this far away no my question is does my camera need to be closer i'm just no, I, that would probably help on that you're not able to see so i can correct that because because i can't see you know it just like it looks like all dark and then i look at what you you did on the picture you sent me and it wasn't all dark. Does I think sense? go back through the video, Gene, and tell me where you're having trouble seeing things because then we can work on that. Okay. I can work on that. If I know what the problem is, I can fix it. But if I don't know what the problem, if it's a, if it's right. a problem with your Cause, eyes. Because I'm, I'm looking at it and it looks like this big to me on the screen. Even when I had it, even when I had it, um, yeah, it, it doesn't. Problem. Now that's a problem with your, that, big. that is a problem with your machine. So we got to figure that out. You've got to figure out how to make me bigger because I made myself as big as I possibly could. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a way to make. What are you working on? An iPad? No, I've got I've got a big monitor, but. So uh, I don't, so it, it does not make sense that I would be maybe, looking so small. Maybe it's because I have too much light on this side. I should turn off my light so I can see. Yeah, so uh, that's what I'm saying. Let's adjust, like figure out what it is that you actually can't see. It might be, I need to bring my camera closer or it may be you need to adjust your sky, your uh, zoom setting. Right. So that you can see better. Um, the whole idea of me having my camera closer is that so that you can see what I'm doing. And right. to have the screen big, you're supposed to be able to see what I'm doing. If that's not happening, I, and I'm actually, I'm getting a drawing desk, so I'll be able to put the camera even closer in so that you can really see what I'm doing. But you, I, it could be there's, you're having problems with your setup over there that's making Yeah, it. yeah. And, but I would say don't, also, don't hesitate to like just watch and then try. Like, because part of it is launching in yeah. too soon and missing things when you're painting and I'm painting. I'm trying to talk as I'm going along, but sometimes it'll help to watch. Um, but that's okay. This is a tough, maybe this is a tougher subject. I had a couple people who had a hard time with it yesterday too. So uh, it could be that this is harder than I think it is. To me, it, it seemed like an easier one because the values were strong, but maybe it's just a little too uh, difficult to launch at people from the beginning. So I'm trying to figure it out. I didn't have trouble doing it in oil. <laughs> it's a different process though. I know, I know. <laughs> Is 
Is anybody else having trouble seeing me on the screen? Janet? Uh, I will, I'm not really doing your lesson this week, I uh, confess. Grant? On the Zoom sessions that I do with the figure models, what I do is I pin the video on the model's box and right. then the model becomes full screen and it's a lot easier to see what's going on. Well, wasn't that what I was doing when I was spotlighting? I don't know. I mean, I do it. The way we do it is we control our Your own. whole board is big, but the back of you is taking up half that space. Well, okay. So that's what I need to hear, Gina. That's where we're, the problem is. I should not be... I can reposition my camera so you guys can see what I'm doing more. But you have to tell yeah. me. I can't see. <laughs> so you need You're to... supposed to be psychic, Leah. <laughs> It may be better when the drawing board comes and I can actually put the camera over and down. I'm going to experiment with a few different ways. I wonder, actually, while I'm thinking about it. All right. I wonder if I open it. Out of curiosity, I'm going to try one or two things, different positions, <laughs> like sex. <laughs> I heard that. Camera positions. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens when I do this. So, Gia, I'm going to show you a couple of things, and you tell me what what works. Oh, hello. So this is where I'm actually thinking about going. I'm going to log back in. Oops. Okay, Penny, there you go. Jump up. Puka! Oh, oh the kitty. That's good. That's looking good. So just keep working those edges. Yes, yes, here she is. Wait, you're about to get a little cat butt. Yay, cat butt! Mm -hmm. Hold on, sorry, I'm calling up my thing again. I want you to just tell me how these things look in terms of being able to see what I'm doing. Okay. Let's take a look at Leah's demo again. I should have unmuted myself. Maybe you need to get off there for a second so I can see. All right, can you see the demo? All right, so if I can get a demo like this. Oh, hold on, hold on, I'm doing some fidgeting. So pin me a demo, Jean, so it's big. I need to see it on the screen myself. Oh, and then of course my damn computer. Hold on. Let me get my thing back in. Let me back in. Oh, honestly. <laughs> Give me a minute. Okay, here we are. Back here. All right. So now I have it. I get it far enough away. So you see how I have my camera point? God damn it. Sorry. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, but sorry. Every time I try to adjust it, it changes. Jeez. Don't mind me. Well, I should probably stop the recording now. I'm going to do that because there's about, bound to be more swearing. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. fuck you and your microphone. All right, here, your microphone thing's fine. All right, here we are. Back. So now. No! <laughs> 
All right, hang on. Let me see if I can position this first and then give me a minute. I'm gonna try and position this first and then I will pop in on the phone. So I'm gonna put that here. This is gonna go like this. Let's try this. All right, Your ceiling see. looks great. Thank you. Let's try that. So can you see how I'm right in on the painting? Yeah. So if I'm adding something, is that better? Yeah, I can see more of the subtlety there. And no body in the way. I mean, yeah. obviously I have to position it to get it back so you could see the whole painting. But can you see me working on it? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm missing the far right in the bottom, but that's okay. On your screen? Yeah. Okay, so it's as big as it possible. Well, it's still, it's still. Okay, something's going on with your Zoom. Yeah, it's still. Um, it's centered in the. In the it's part. centered, but well, let me get rid of. No, it's not centered. I'm going to have to work a lot harder to get this position so you can see the whole thing. My question is, can you see me working more closely here? It's, yeah, it's still not my whole, let me see. Yeah, I know that because I don't have it positioned exactly correctly. No, 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 I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about how big it is. Um, yeah, you, on need, to, you need to figure out That's much to, better. That's much better. Right? So now you can see me working like this. Yeah. Much better. Okay, so we'll try this uh, view the next time. But also, work to make your, to figure out what it is you need to do to make your camera bigger. Because I don't want you guys missing this stuff. At this point, we're now getting into pretty secret brushstrokes. So I'd like you to be able to see. Yeah, I think that's going to work out. So what I've done, you can see this. If you go to the other via, you can see I'll show you. What I've done is set up the camera on top of the easel. Can you see? Mm -hmm. If you go to Leah Kohlenberg, the other one, you can see I'm showing, you can see the position of the camera. How about that? Can you see that better? So the camera it's is, the what? It's about the same right there. I, so I'm saying look at me, Leah Kohlenberg, not Leah Demo, and you'll see oh, where okay. I'm just showing you my camera setup so you can see how it's working. Go to the other Leah and you'll see. So okay. now coming like this, and then the camera's coming over and pointing directly, uh -huh, uh -huh. right, directly on, like that close. Right. See that? So that's the difference. Before, it was hanging up over here. Right. And then I, it had to go over my shoulder. But this way, it doesn't. I can go right in. I can go right in. And all you see is my hand. You don't see anything else because the camera's right here. So I think that'll work better. I still, I just sent you what I can see. So you see it still doesn't fill my screen even when I have you pinned. So I don't think that's me. I think that's you. No, I think it's me. Yeah. <laughs> Although, let me see. Like Grant, can you see what I just sent? Does yours look the same way? I'm looking. Hang on. That's a pretty good view though. Yeah, this is much, that's much better than it was. That's a great view. Uh, I didn't get what you sent, Jean. Uh, you sent it at here. Look like what you, what you see on your screen when she's doing the demo? You sent it as a text. Hold on, I'll send it over as a WhatsApp. I'll shoot. Oh, no, I put it in the WhatsApp too. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes. oh it just came through. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's that's what it looks like for me too. Okay. I wonder if it's because I'm using a cell phone. Well, do you have your cell phone horizontal or vertical? Well, obviously it's vertical there. I it, just do it just doesn't look centered over the picture. However, I need to, depending on what direction. It's been vertical, it's been horizontal. Right. Let me try uh, putting it horizontal and see what happens. Just out of curiosity. All right. But I don't think it'll make much of a difference. So maybe that is my issue because I'm using a cell phone. It will only get so big. So maybe what I need is like an iPad or something bigger. I got one of these Logitech um, webcams and it's awesome. It's 
sends a crystal clear picture and it's really wide. So it's a detachable webcam? Yeah. Um, oh, well. I, I, also, think I can get um, of it. It'll be tricky because I'll have to get. Um, I had to buy it on eBay because you can't get them right now. Like they're all, everybody's sold out. Right. But, but eBay, also, I don't know if I can people have them for, they're new in the box. Okay, hold on. I have a 10 year old Logitech I webcam like, yeah. and it's still awesome. They're, it's they're 10 awesome. freaking years old and it's still awesome. Wow. That's, That's fancy, awesome. Janet. They do very good products. I've had them before. I just I love it. And it has that little flap so you can um, make sure nobody can ever spy on you. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, mine doesn't have that. Hold on. So I'm going to go back in and jump in again. I mean, in any event, I honestly think what you guys are seeing is big enough if I put it in, if I put it close to the... I yeah, no, I think I think that's going to work a lot better for me. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Um, or it could just be that I suck tonight. <laughs> I think you just went too fast. I think I think it's easy to go too fast on this assignment. Um, okay, so here we've got it horizontal. So Jean, look at how it looks. Uh, I have it. I have the the phone going horizontal. Does that show it any bigger? Or does it still seem? Um, so does that look bigger? It's, um, it's, sorry, it's, um, it's the same. It's picking up you, not the Leah demo. So. What's that? But that looks good. That looks good. So here, let me, uh, so I'm going to stop the share for a second so that you, so here's another thing. I'm going to stop the share and let me spotlight this Leah demo. Yeah. Does that? Look bigger. That's good. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, that does look bigger. Okay, what did you do? So, yeah, I'll just put it horizontal. All right, I'm glad we figured this out, you guys. I'm totally glad we figured this out.